you buy into that notion? Never too old to exercise. I sure do. It's meant, the, it's meant, it's meant absolutely everything to me. Let me give you just a little bit of background. My name is Brent Daly, and uh, at the um, time of this recording, I am 75 years old. Two years ago, I uh, suffered a heart attack. Uh, I was a little overweight, almost to the obese, I guess, a little overweight. Um, had a history, a little bit of health issues, and uh, then I was reminded that we are all getting older and I uh, wasn't in that good shape. Had to have um, bypass surgery, uh, had that big one replaced, uh, it's referred to as the Widowmaker, and three other smaller uh, blood vessels replaced in my heart. Um, lots of people have them now, mine uh, took a little longer than it should have and the recovery process was complicated by a lot of different factors. And so I didn't do anything, mow the lawn, go for a walk. I didn't do anything physical for 18 months. And during that time, I became very aware that I was still gaining, even though I'm on a heart healthy diet, I was still gaining a little weight. And I was noticing my arms were, were beginning to look more like my fingers. And my legs were, well, they were looking like an old man's legs. I decided it was once we got all this other stuff worked out with my heart, I could I could start exercising again, and I I decided I what I need to do is be more proactive about that. I need to learn about what I'm doing. It's one thing to exercise; it's another thing to eat the right food. So these muscles that I'm trying to create will burn it positively. That I will not gain any more weight, might even lose a little, but more importantly, I'm going to regain that muscle mass I lost. In doing all the research, I realize what I've got here may be of use to others. And so that's what this is all about. Everything we talk about here uh, is researched from a 75 year old's point of view. Someone who has been somewhat active throughout his life, but not enough to keep me from gaining weight and not enough to keep me from having to have uh, open heart surgery. So, I definitely believe it is never too old to exercise and it's never too old to get fit once again. So if I get to talking fast and I sound like I know what I'm talking about, well, I sort of do, but I also empathize with any of you who have not been active for quite a while, feel like you really should because suddenly you realize I might want to prolong my life a few more years. And if I'm active, I can do that. So let's jump into this. I need to uh, get that fan off. There we go. Let's talk first about, I have to think about that for a minute. Well, there's, there's a lot to be considered when deciding on a suitable exercise regimen, no matter what your age is. And if you are in what is called the senior category, that's you and me, you need to give careful consideration to some important facts before you begin an exercise program. So, you know, it really makes sense for us to address those first before we get into any exercises. So the first thing up is metabolism and your metabolic rate. A lot is talked about, especially in exercise. We always think about um, your metabolic rate slows down as you age. And there's usually a significant loss in metabolism rate as we age, to be honest with you. And this affects the muscle mass, which inadvertently eventually turns into inert depot of fat. The slowed cellular metabolism rate would require a more controlled intake of food. Makes sense, right? If the body fat content is not to be increased any further, then we must watch what we eat. With the inclusion and presence of a consistent exercise regimen as part of this daily lifestyle, you have a better chance of maintaining an ideal body mass and weight, even without exercise. See, the change in metabolism must be considered when you are looking at an exercise program as you age, whether you just want to stay healthy, or you are looking to gain muscle, like I am, or you are even thinking of losing weight, which, by the way, 
you can do contrary to what some people say. You can lose weight in a healthy way even as you age. I'm living proof of it. So let's take a closer look at metabolism as it truly is the foundation for everything we are going to talk about in this course and will affect your decision from here forward in your quest for a healthier body. What do I mean by that? <laughs> what you eat and how you exercise. Now, to make it simple, your metabolic rate is the rate at which your body burns calories. Simple as that. You can separate the types of calories your body burns into two categories. You have your resting calories or your active calories. See, while you're just sitting on your couch or at your desk working, your body is burning a certain amount of baseline calories. We all know that. This is your body at rest. In fact, the calories your body uses for basic biological functions at rest account for about 60 to 75 percent of the total amount of energy you burn or your calories. While muscle mass burns more than fat mass, your organs then use up most of the calories you need for breathing, heart beating, regulating body temperature, digestion, and so on. So just, let's just take a minute and, and look over this course. I'm just going to hit it briefly, but just you, you might even want to pause the uh, video and study this. Look, look at your liver. It, it, in doing its work, it consumes the most energy that your body uses every day. Next in line is your brain, and you don't have to do anything. It just works. Now your heart, it is doing things. It's pumping like crazy all day long, hopefully. But interestingly enough, it only uses 7%. Your, your kidneys filtering out your system. Look at that, how many calories it burns a day. And your, your muscles and all other organs, they're, they're performing, when they're performing at their best, they're using 19% of the calories you burn every day. To me, that is fascinating. Okay, now, although this resting metabolic rate, or your RMR, accounts for the majority of the calories your body burns, another 25 to 40% of calories are being expended on a daily basis. This energy is called thermogenous. It's the energy used for things like eating, walking around the block, and competing in a triathlon. So you add together your RMR and your thermogenous, and that makes up your total energy expenditure, or your T. That's the total burn rate for you. Now there are three types of this thermogenous, and we need to talk about that. There's exercise thermogenous, that's physical or daily activities, like walking or going to the gym or swimming or whatever. And then there's the non-exercise activity thermogenous, and that's non-structured activity like shivering or fidgeting around or something like that. And then there is the diet-induced thermogenous or the thermic effect of food. Calories burned when breaking down food as you eat it. So even when you eat, you're burning calories. Depending on how active you are, how much you exercise and your movement, that accounts for about 15 to 30 percent of your burn with about 10% from chewing, swallowing, digesting, absorbing, and storing the food you eat. It's amazing. Your body is constantly burning food, which releases units of heat known as calories, but technically called kilocalories, or shortened to kcal. The law of thermodynamics states that energy isn't created or destroyed. It is simply transferred from the food you eat to the fuel your body uses to function. If you aren't eating enough, your body senses deprivation. Your metabolism slows when your diet isn't giving you all the nutrients and calories you need. Adaptive thermogenous is your body's way of protecting you from losing too much energy if you're suddenly dropped into a desert island or you suddenly decide, I'm going to go on a 30-day fast to lose a lot of weight. Then, when you eat regularly or too much, your body would tend to hold on to those calories because it still thinks you're on a desert island or being stupid and not eating, and you're just having a rare feast. And so it will store all of that that you just ate, where as fat. So part of maximizing your metabolism involves ensuring that your body doesn't feel deprived so that it keeps on burning calories as effectively as possible. 
The degree to which your body burns calories varies based on many factors, like what's on your plate and what your diet's been like in the past. Not all calories are created equally. You know that. Protein has a greater thermic effect than fat. For example, that means that protein burns a lot faster. Not only does fat give you more calories per gram, nine calories per gram compared to carbs and protein that only offer four calories per gram, but fewer of those calories will be burned through the thermic effect. Okay, to actually measure the amount of heat you've lost, in other words, to measure your metabolic rate, it is, it's very expensive and it's a very complicated procedure. So most scientists use something called indirect uh, calorie counting which measures oxygen consumption and carbon dioxide production. The oxygen you breathe in helps fuel your furnace, as it does when it keeps a fire going. And each liter of oxygen you take in, a certain amount of calories are expended. And your respiratory exchange rate, or the ratio between the carbon dioxide and the oxygen, determines that amount. I know this is getting complicated. I'm about done. If you need more information on metabolism, especially how to speed it up as we age, please check out my uh, institute course on, I think the title is the Metabolism Master Class. We just don't have enough time here to go into even more detail, and I promise you it's not as boring as what we just went through. Next up, we're going to talk about the food you eat.